Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Tonight, I'd like to explore a bit deeper into the idea of activating your sensory neural network as a way to enhance your inner awareness and also to access body, mind, spirit integration and move into a state of super consciousness. And then we're going to go into the concept of Jing Shen, the spirit of vitality, and do some stuff with that to be able to, to practice getting that. The, uh, going back to the first point, the, I've talked often and long about uh, the idea of feeling. And I really want to emphasize that because it's something that is so deep and uh, it is so fundamental. This is something that's, that's mentioned in, in the Young Family Secret Transmissions. They talk about that idea of conscious feeling and conscious movement so that you're actually bringing your conscious awareness to things that oftentimes get put onto automatic. And one of the things that gets really gets put on automatic is your sensory input. That is the information that's coming in through your senses. And it is almost entirely at a pre-conscious level. That is, you're not aware of it unless you actually think about it. You know, say, oh yeah. And then even then we have a tendency to immediately go to the story. We have immediately go to the narrative that, that gets picked up there. So I feel something and, oh, I think, oh, that's cold or that's sharp or that's smooth. You know, if I see something, seeing is especially uh, difficult for this because the mind is very close to the, the, uh, the, the conscious mind is very close to the, to the seeing and about 80% of the information is coming in through your senses goes through your eyes. So you're, you immediately translate what you're seeing into a story. So getting that, that ability to, to tap into the perception prior to a thought about that perception uh, is, is really key. So that you're, you're able to slow that down so you're accessing a different part of your, your, your nervous system when you do that. So the, the automatic response of, being, of seeing something and, and immediately going into a narrative about that is pretty heavily ingrained and requires a, a certain amount of discipline to be able to get out of that. And that's why I like to start with the sense of touch because it's a very gross, dense energy regarding touch. And when I talk about touch, I'm talking about the, the, the sense of, uh, of feeling, feeling something, not as an emotion, but as a, as a tactile sensation. And here it's both the, your external environment, the world around you, where you're touching things out there, prior to the saying, oh, that is a, a blanket or that is fur or whatever that you're translating it into a story prior to that, but also your internal environment. So you're having this, this perception that is um, your, an inner perception. You can think of it as a, a, like the word is enteroception. I forget the Chinese word for it. Um, but uh, basically you're looking and, and, and sensing changes in your, in your body mind. This morning I was sitting out in the, in the garden and I was feeling my heartbeat and just like tuning into that. And it just came on unannounced, but I was just like, okay, so let's just, let's just ride with this a while. So just feeling that and then feeling my pulse, feeling, the circulation of blood through my, through my blood vessels. 
And that's not something that we do often. And uh, it requires a certain amount of, of focus, a certain amount of getting out of your own way mentally to be able to do that. But when you do, when you kind of go to that gap between thoughts and you say, oh, okay, you're just listening to your heartbeat, then there it allows you to attune to your internal environment. And you know, there are people who can who can feel the their cranial bones expanding and contracting. You know, it, there are different levels of sensation that one can attune to, both internal and external. So, you know, there's um, uh, in cranial sacral, I, I, someone said in the upledger course, you, you know, there's a, you have to close a book and put a, a hair in there, and then you have to be able to feel the hair through the book to be able to, uh, you know, to attune your, your sense of touch. So, you know, I've been doing polarity therapy for, and, and, and um, cranial sacral now for about, you know, 25 years. And, and so there's, when you sit there and you actually feel into the subtle changes that occur in someone's body, by holding their head, say, or their feet, you know, you if you're doing that for an hour at a time, or maybe many hours, then you you develop a certain sensitivity to these things because you you have to quiet your own stuff in order to be able to do that. Well, it's something that I think all of us can benefit from being able to attune to our internal state, and because it's always with you, and your external state as well. So your ability to, to do that allows you to access a different part of your nervous system. So you're working with your sensory neural network, which is for the most part, it's happening at a pre-conscious level. When you get to bring this consciousness to it, then your conscious mind and your sensory mind are both active at the same time. And so your whole brain goes into a heightened state of coherence. You're creating more activity, more neural activity, and you're also integrating these things. So not only are your left and right hemispheres coordinating, but also vertically, your, the, you know, the, if you think about it as a triune brain, where you have, you know, three levels of, of, uh, nervous system processing, you know, you the the denser pre-conscious part gets to gets to have a uh, a party with the uh, with the conscious part. And when that happens, your your whole brain starts to start the fire. And uh, at, at Taiji Alchemy, we just had, you know, several people were talking about how they could actually feel the activity in their brains. That's something that is so you can learn to to feel where which part of your brain is lighting up. And it's something I played with myself, where you know actually will you know with with machine that that can tell you which part, and you can actually learn to activate different parts of your brain consciously. So we're going to do a a a, um, a short meditation here, and the idea is to be able to to separate your sense of feeling consciously. Because there's a tendency for the conscious mind to just kind of throw it all together and say, oh yeah, yeah, I, I got that. And to turn it into a, an abstraction or an algorithm that you can do. But what we want to do is put the brakes on that and actually control your nervous system so that you can just feel one thing and not another. And to be able to, and when I say when you're feeling it, that's that's a conscious thing, a conscious recognition of that sensory information. So, um, you know, the distinction can be made touching and feeling. You know, I can I can touch my head, and that's an, an action. That's something that I'm doing. But to actually feel it, I have to shift 
from the motor function, which is the touching, to the sensory function, function the afferent neural network, and be able to actually tune into that. So this is a fast way of shifting into a heightened state of, of nervous system coherence and to shift into a superconscious state. So let's play with this a little bit. So um, just sit with your feet flat on the floor and you want to reach with the crown of your head. Sit up straight. Round your elbows a little bit and feel into that. So let's begin by just feeling the floor with your left foot. And take a breath and just allow your mind to settle into that. Just to feel Feel the floor with your left foot. You're consciously activating that part of your nervous system that gives you information about the about that. But you want to do it prior to thinking about it. You're not thinking about how heavy is my foot. You're not thinking about how what is the surface that I'm touching. None of that stuff. You just want to feel. Now feel your right foot, let go of your left and shift your awareness as much as you can to your right foot. In doing this, we're activating, we're alternating between the hemispheres of the brain. The left side of the brain controls information from the right side. So you're activating the left side of your brain now Now feel your left foot touching the floor. Now feel your right foot touching the floor. It's a very simple exercise, but it allows us to establish a baseline that, yeah, this is something that I can do, right? So if I were to, to immediately to say, I want you to feel your spleen, it might be a little tougher. Uh, so you want, you want to just do something that's give your nervous system a sense of accomplishment, like, oh boy, I did it, yay me. Okay, now feel the big toe in your left foot. If you can do it without moving the big toe, that's great. But if you if you need to move it to, to actually feel it contacting the floor, that's fine too. The key is here to activate that nervous system, activate that sensory neural network. Now feel the big toe in your right foot. Let go of your left foot, feel the big toe. Yeah. Now, place your hands on your legs, your knees. I'm going to call it your knees if you, you know, if you can comfortably. That's fine. If not just think about your your leg. But the you want to feel your left knee with your left hand. Here you have to divide your attention between the information that's coming from your leg and from your hand. Now feel your left hand with your knee. So you're, you're disconnecting from the hand to whatever degree you can so you can feel your knee. Feel with your knee.
Now feel your right knee with your right hand. Notice there might be a delay. That's okay. Because your nervous system is having to establish new neural pathways to make this happen. It's not something we do every day. So now feel your hand with your right knee. Now look at your mind and notice that you're in the gap between thoughts. That there's a lot of space there, yet you're fully aware. You're just not thinking. And in this state, you're better able to know without thinking. You're shifting from the pocket calculator of your nervous system to a supercomputer. Now feel your, your left elbow. And this is challenging for a lot of people, but you want you to do it. So if you Bring your awareness to your left elbow and allow it to, to linger there. Now let go of that and bring your awareness to your right elbow. And bring it back to your left elbow. And back to your right elbow. Now feel your the top of your head, feel your scalp, your hair, whatever you got there. And bring your awareness to that. Now simultaneously feel your feet touching the floor and feel the top of your head. Now add in your elbows, feel those without letting go of the, your head, your feet, your elbows. Because in a super conscious state, you can do this. Feel your hands. Feel your knees. Yeah, now bring it back and allow your awareness to relax and just be present in the moment and
Just allow that to settle out. And notice that the effect of the superconscious state lingers, but it's not as intense whenever you let it go. You can allow that so you're able to shift easily between the superconscious, between the, the rational thinking and also the not thinking to be able to do that easily, shift between the two. Cool. Okay, any questions or thoughts on this? Stan. I just, uh, uh, I think I'm getting it, but I seem to have a, uh, uh, when uh, there are two, like the hand touching the knee. Uh, it's kind of, I think I'm doing it, but I, they seem to have a problem whether it's the hand feeling or is it the knee feeling? Yeah. Only you can know. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> so you get you get to play with that and, and you get to figure it out. Because that's okay. your nervous system. crutch. You, okay. you, you are you you are you're the bus driver on that nervous system. So you get to decide where, where you're driving. So okay. Okay, that that's you. <laughs> Thank you. And so okay. puzzle. Okay. <laughs> Rick. Ever since you first, when you, I laughed when you made that comment, we don't do this every day, because every, from the, I don't remember the first time you taught this, but ever since the first time you taught that, I've been doing this every day. <laughs> ah. I stand corrected. <laughs> when I wake up, and I sit corrected, when I wake up in the morning, after I do my exercises for my rotator cuff, and I sit on the edge of the bed and about to get up, I do hand knee, hand knee. Uh -huh. and foot floor, foot floor. So I'm going to add some of the other things you taught tonight to my morning regimen. Beautiful. And, I, <laughs> and let, me assure, let me assure everyone, the more you do it, the easier it gets. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rick. That's beautiful. Okay. Keith, do you have something? No, you're okay. You're just waving hands. Okay. Rick, uh, Richard. That was a thank you because it's a repetition. Okay, good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Richard. Um, I just discovered something that may, others may find interesting. Um, it, when, you think that, when you think that it's elusive, for instance, to feel your knee with your hand, you know, you have just a gentle touch. I just discovered I have a little scuff on my right knee. And I could feel that just like that. So sometimes it's the smoothness. Um, but I found a little irregularity and it was very clear to me that I was feeling my knee. Good, so. good. You can also give, give, give it a squeeze. You know, you can, you can, you can, you can, you know, poke it or, you know, you can, you can move your knee or whatever. It's, there are ways of, 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 of develop, of fine tuning it. You don't have to immediately get it, you know, at, at the, at that level of, of, of insubstantiality. And you kind of introduce it because, you know, our nervous systems have been working a certain way for a long time, and we're asking them to be asking them to do something that's kind of new here, and we're continually refining this. So it's not like, oh, I got the I got the knee, I got the hand thing, get I'm done. No, no, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning to be able to to sense. And this is what you know, we would call in Taiji, we call this tingjin, the ability to sense at, 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 a, uh, at a finer and finer level. So that you, know, you start with, with your own physical body and then it allows you to expand outward. So that you're able to pick up perceptions that other people might call ESP. You know, they, you would, you're, you're just using that tingjin to be able to to sense something that uh, that is at a distance, and that's that's fun. Uh, someone else, Dennis. Yeah, for me it was it was finding that space between the hand between the hand and the knee, and it's a very fine very fine point. It's a really tight balancing point. Cool, good, Scott. 
I don't know where I went, but it was deep and I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm going back. <laughs> Go back. <laughs> Great. Richard. Just a just a quick thought. There used to be a show on TV that I liked a lot called The Mentalist. And at the beginning of the show, they would ask him, you know, they would sort of query him, do you, you know, do you have ESP? And he said, no, I don't. I don't. I can just really pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. That's good. That's good. Are you, are you saying something, Keith? All I want to say before I just mute out is that for me, the concept of trying to fill your hand with your knee or your or your hand with your elbow versus what's normal of feeling everything with your hand, as difficult as that is, that simple concept is helping me just try to like get a little deeper. And that's it. Beautiful. Thank you. That's 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 what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. That's great. Okay. Uh, moving on. Okay. So the uh, next thing is uh, the concept of Jingshen. And uh, Jingshen is uh, translated usually as spirit of vitality. It combines two words, Jing and Shen. And so in this, the, the, the Taiji model of spiritual cultivation, it, one refines Jing, and that is one's essence, bodily essence, basically. But it's also, you know, refers to your, like your kidney chi and uh, your, your sense of vitality, your, your body's ability to to feel robust and energetic. And um, it works on a, you know, on the endocrine system, it works, you know, create the uh, uh, sense of coherence without the whole system, sense of um, uh, vigor. So the, the Jing, learning to be able to unkink the hose so, the, so that the energy is flowing freely at that physical level, then frees up to cultivate the energy at the energy level. And that's where we start to become more and more attuned. So first we're feeling into our bodies and we're getting really attuned to that and getting so that we're able to feel robust and healthy. And then we start to become more and more aware of the next level of insubstantiality. <laughs> which is at the level of chi. And chi is, you know, the way I think of it is energy is the connection. It's the relationship between stuff. So that is if you, you know, how one thing relates to another is, is defined by energy. So the energy that drives our body is as to do with we are taking a wholeness that is your body mind. And we're saying, okay, we're going to kind of examine this with a really fine microscope and start to look at, at a way of thinking about the way this, these things relate, these parts relate to each other. And we, so that we can differentiate something which you can't really see. But if you're, if you attune to that level of insubstantiality, back to the Tingjin again, you start to have an awareness of different forms of energy. It's still just one big energy. And even that is like a, uh, it's, it's, it's an idea. It's, it's, a, it's a way of thinking. So we're, we're dividing it up, you know, and in the Chinese model, you have your meridians, you got your channels, and, and then you have the elements, they provide a certain energetic context for these things. So there's different ways of breaking it down so that you can get a very coherent system that 
can predict certain things and can remedy certain things. And so it's, it's helpful, it's useful in that way. It's not the only energy model. The you know, one that I use in uh, polarity therapy uses more of a Western model, which instead of five elements being the uh, uh, wood, fire, earth, metal, water, it's the more the Western model from the Western esoteric tradition where you have earth, water, fire, air, and ether. So just different ways of, of breaking it down and to do different things, different different ways of approaching your health and your ability to function in the world. So if we go from Jing to Qi, so we get in tune with our Qi, we start to identify with our Qi, we start to feel it, we start to start feel the, you know, the, it as a, as, as a thing. And then we move into another level of insubstantiality, which is Shen or spirit. And that's where we, once we move into that, we're in that state of wholeness, something that we just explored with the, the superconscious state. In that state of heightened coherence, where you, the nervous system is quieted and you move to that gap between thoughts, then you're, you are, if you direct intention through that, that is where we, we see Shen. It's, it's a directed spirit. And um, you know the, the soul part is the abiding part. That's the, that's, that's the yin part. The yang part is, is the Shen. I forget the exact name of, um, of uh, the soul part, but anyway, that's the, that's the idea. You have this this yin yang in in that as well, and then the 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 model then takes it from shen into emptiness, where there's sort of just dissolving into nothingness or emptiness or an absence of stuff, and that's the, at an even deeper level of insubstantiality. So when we talk about jing shen. We're talking about the spirit of vitality. That is, your there's a, a an integration of that sense of wholeness with the physical body and its ability to function at a higher level. And with it, even though it's not expressed within those those two terms, there there is an energy that that can be sensed. To, to the degree that you distinguish or differentiate. So the, uh, the way that is classically defined to access this Jingshen is through the Jade Pillow Gate. And I've mentioned that many, many times and I want to uh, just to reemphasize here for anybody who might be tuning in to this on YouTube, you know, the you want to reach with the crown of your head and then feel that, that spot right here at the, at the base of the skull. The actual jingshen, uh, the actual uh, jade pillow gate is right here under the occiput, but we want to focus on that middle point there where, where the spinal cord goes into the brain, where the, the atlas, the topmost vertebra, connects up with the occiput. That, the that hole there it's called the the big hole or in latin the foramen magnum it's uh that's a where the cerebral spinal fluid moves in and out it's also that location is where your medulla oblongata is it's it's a a, a, a focal point and you can think of it too where you know that's where the body the body essence connects up with the head with the with your brain and so there's this, to the degree that we can open up our jade pillow gate, we are then able to unify body and mind and allow us to access spirit. So the, uh, uh, we'll do this first as a, as a sitting uh, meditation here. And I just want you to put your, your finger 
right at the base of your skull there. So you can feel that, that point. And so just like we were doing before, I want you to feel that spot with your finger. Now feel your finger with your jade pillow gate. Now feel your jade pillow gate with your finger. Now feel your finger with your jade pillow gate. Now move your finger and feel your jade pillow gate from the inside. Now, I want you just ever so slightly reach with the crown of your head and very lightly tuck in your chin, just so you feel the, the slightest initiation of an opening there. So it's like, like a very quiet nod. When you nod, it's not, your focus is not on the nodding it's on the opening. And do it. So what I'd like you to do now is to incorporate that with your breathing so that every time you inhale, you consciously inhale, you consciously open the jade pillow gate. and relax as you exhale. Good. Let's just be there. Just with the least amount of effort you can muster, just continue to activate your jade pillow gate. So there's no muscular tension there at all. You're reaching with the crown of your head. You're not pushing your head. So it's not a question of holding it open. It's every time you bring your awareness to that action, you consciously, volitionally choose to activate your jade pillow gate. It activates the Jing Shen. Good. Now we're going to stand up and uh, play with that a little bit. Let's start first. Let's just start by by um, um, getting our three pillars in. So step out with your left foot. Back a little bit. There we go. Feel the balls of your feet. Knees are unlocked. Reach with the crown of your head. 
tuck in the chin, open the jade pillow gate. Relax your lower back, allow your sacrum to drop, flattening out the lumbar area somewhat. Feel your elbows, reach around your arms a little bit. And feel your index fingers, point and reach with your index fingers. And then as you Stand here, you, each time you inhale, consciously activate your jade pillow gate. And feel the balls of your feet at the same time. And just notice your internal state. Now we're going to go through the um, just the first few movements of the Wudong Mountain Tai Yi Wuxing Chen. You can follow along um, as best you can. The important thing here is not that you execute the movements perfectly. The important thing is that as we do it, you bring your awareness to your, your jade pillow gate and activate that, that spirit of vitality each time you, uh, whenever, I, whenever I, I mention it. Okay, so I'm going to turn my back to you and follow along. Bring your feet together. Can you see my feet? I uh, know. Okay, step four. There we go. How's that? Better. Okay. I feel your three pillars. Spiral down and turn, step out, pivot, and activate that jade pillow, open, bow, gather, carrying the chi. Open the jade pillow gate, reach with your elbows, reach with your fingers. And sink. Rotate your palms, your forearm palms outward. Activate your jade pillow gate. Open. Separate the hands. And open. And right hand comes down. Right foot comes in. And step out. Reach with the right elbow. Set the knee. And turn. Act open. Pivot on your left heel, left ball, knee, quad. 
turn open. Keeping your right leg, right hand circles up, left hand circles down. Step in with your left foot, open. Step out, reach with your left elbow. Rotate your left forearm, palm out, open. Pivot on your right heel, sink, turn, open. Pivot on your left heel, sink, turn, open. Step in, About right ball, set the right knee, right elbow, rotate, open. Sink into your left leg, rotate, open your straight pillow gate, and turn. Pivot on the right heel. Open. Sink. Rotate your forearms, palms out. Reach with your elbows. Reach with your fingers. Relax your lower back. Open. Let's come down. Open. Each time you inhale, open the jade pillow gate. Pull the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, step in, open, deep breath, and disappear the chi, dissolve into the emptiness. Take a seat. How'd we do? Lynn? Well, I just have a question. Um, so when I'm opening the jade pillow gate, I also find myself connecting to the new one um, at the same time. That's, yes. that's groovy, isn't it? I mean, it seems to all go together. Yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Then, then I did great. We did good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every time you reach for that crown, you know, you're activating the new one as well. You're feeling that, yeah. Yeah, good. Good. Scott. That generated a scary amount of energy. I actually kind of had to back it off. 
It was whoa. It was like whoa. Okay, good. It was yeah. It was just it was again. It was you know my body was starting to get scared. Okay, <laughs> uh, un understood. And it's a level of insubstantiality that you've got to get comfortable with. You just like you just by doing it, so it becomes like oh yeah yeah, yeah I, I I got that one. Yeah. Well, it wasn't the it's it wasn't, wasn't the insubstantial so much as just the amount of energy. That amount was of energy. Hard. Okay. Cool. You develop a tolerance as you upgrade your wiring. Right. Keith. I'm sorry. I'm the new guy in the group. What's a knee one? Uh, the crown of your head. Think of it that way. It's, it's, there's Thank more detail you. than that. But it's you a, know what? That's, that's the most powerful place that I have found. Good. Thank Good. you. Good. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Dennis felt very light. Good. You so felt just everything was floating up. Good. Beautiful. Anybody else? Jonathan. You're on mute, Jonathan. You're, you're still on mute. Uh, hey. So, okay. So it's, it's almost like my head's being reattached to my body. It's like, you know, it's not just your head, it's your face, your eyes. And it's almost like it wants to go on its own mission away from the body, your head. And it's like, it's like, no, no, like connect with the whole body here. Because when it's in this position, it's like knocked off its pedestal or something, even though it's attached. But it, there's a lot going on with that, you know, this reattachment. <laughs> I mean, I get the Shen and all that, the Niwan, but it, it just, and just even to tilt the head from where you had us pointing before, you know, where the hard part of the skull and where that hole comes in, to tilt the head from there rather than like the middle of the neck. It's like, there's so much to do. I may not have time for my elbows, but I'll bring them in too. <laughs> it, uh, you're absolutely right. It, it's, 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 learning and by taking your time slowing down and and really feeling into this there's so much I, i've been doing this for a long time and every day is uh, you know is, is a learning experience for me so it's like you know because there are old patterns that keep reasserting themselves and so it's never you're never done with this it All just right. it but the beautiful thing is that every time you consciously go there, you consciously activate this, you're, you're given a gift. It's just big red bow, and it, it's, it's terrific. Amen, brother. <laughs> cool. Richard. Well, you know what, what Jonathan was saying just really struck me because, um, you know, Sharon has a skeleton, uh, the big skeleton up in her. Uh, space and i'm just thinking to myself if you look at that skeleton that's where you detach the head right it's almost like that's you could unscrew the head there so it, it suddenly seems uh it suddenly seems less um uh, less um uh, tied in uh, so thanks jonathan that was gave me a, a good insight <laughs> Oh, Scott. Yeah. Also, you know, since we've been doing, we did some of the stuff in Sedona, and you know, incorporating it into my form has been uh, really well. Wonderful. Yeah. Good. That's, that's a good point, there, Scott. To, to, to yeah, we did it in in this form, which most of you don't know, and uh, it uh, to do it in something you do know adds a whole new element to your practice because we have a tendency to kind of get get into a groove with 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 forms we know and and kind of coast through them and this if you can attune your your um, opening the jade pillow gate with the movements in your form it it changes changes everything Sharon. Um, 
it's just for myself when I'm playing with um, each breath and opening the jade pillow gate. Um, I, it's actually, it's very minute movement, but it feels so full. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. And so this is something that, you know, I do hundreds of times a day. And I, you know, recommend that because it's really, <laughs> it doesn't cost you anything. And it just, every time you do, you are plugging into that Jing Shen and you're adding to your account, adding to your vitality account and, you know, compound interest. Oh man, it adds up real quick. So, uh, <laughs> so I uh, highly recommend you, you know, as much as anytime you think of it, just boop, and it takes nothing, nothing to do. And it's also a way of correcting patterns that are not helpful, that, that disconnect you, disconnect body and mind, disconnect head and body. So you want to overdo, you know, um, you want to be able to open that up as much as you can. Picking up the sun, putting away the moon and is a great move. Oh, yeah, we didn't do that. We didn't do that. Right. Um, sorry about that. We'll uh, catch that next time. It didn't fit in with this particular exercise, but uh, we will uh, we'll, uh, we'll catch you up on that next time. The embracing, uh, lifting, the lifting, sky. lifting the sky and embracing the moon. That's right. Yeah, that does those two. Yes, we'll do that next time. OK, everybody. Thank you all so much. It's been lovely. Really appreciate and love you all. Thank you, Maria.